I think the best way to learn is to make mistakes. So we will cover 5 most fundamental DOM refs mistakes. And by DOM refs, I mean refs that are used for persisting DOM nodes, because you could also use them for persisting values. And by the end of this video, you should also understand why we use refs instead of DOM API selectors, how understanding render and commit phase in React can help you avoid some of those mistakes, why refs are called an escape hatch, and what aspects of DOM should be controlled by state instead of refs. Starting from simplest to the most complex. Most people don't even think about it, but we could theoretically get the DOM node without React, using vanilla JavaScript and DOM API. However, I will show you three reasons why it's a mistake, and you should oppose or even refactor this kind of code yourself, if you ever come across it. First of all, we have to come up with a specific selector. This one is pretty simple, but it could be much more complicated in a bigger component. Second, because we are acting on a global document object, we are not isolated from other components, so we can get into conflict with them and get other elements that we expected to obtain. Third, even if we get through first two problems and we are sure that our input element is the correct DOM node, we are now vulnerable to change. For example, if we add a heading to the beginning of the form, now this heading is the first child, so our selector becomes outdated, our element is incorrect, and our code for focusing element will either focus a wrong one or will break entirely. So any given time we would make a change to the DOM structure, we would have to worry about all our selectors. But if we use refs, React does the heavy lifting for us. No selectors to come up with, no conflicts between components, no problems when DOM structure changes. Our refs are much more resilient. But still, there are a few things that we should be aware of. If I run this code, there's actually one problem. We are calling focus method on the DOM node before it was initialized. And we are going to get an error. Cannot read properties of undefined, reading focus. You must know that in any given update in React, there are two phases. Render phase, when our component is called to figure out what changes should be rendered on the screen, and commit phase, when those changes are actually applied to the screen. So now we try to use reference to the DOM node, but it was not created yet. To fix it, we need to move our DOM API call after the commit phase. That's what use effect is for. It executes our code after the DOM is updated. Basically, everything besides effects and events is part of the render phase. So if we want to access something directly from the DOM, we should move it out of rendering code, either to effect or event handler. This problem with the order in which React code is executed doesn't only apply to the initial mount of the component, but to each subsequent re-render as well. In this example, we have a diff with initial width of 100 pixels, a button to increase the width by 10, and the text displaying current width. The increment handler is fired when the user clicks and its setting state with the new value of extra width, above the initial value. Here you can see 96 pixels because there are 4 additional pixels of this white border around the box. But I've made a mistake here, using ref to render the current width to the screen. Because on each click when the state is updated, there is a re-render triggered. And in return statement, we generate our JSX, which reads from two sources. For div styles, we read from extra width state which is already updated and it will have 110 pixels. And for paragraph text, because we are using ref, we read the value directly from the current DOM tree. But the DOM was not yet updated, so it still contains 100 pixels value. So in the div we pass 110 pixels, and in the paragraph text we pass 100 pixels. Our JSX is then processed in render and commit phase. And only after the commit phase, the value in ref, so in the actually rendered DOM tree, will be changed to 110. But it's already too late, because our code execution was completed. There is no other render, so we end up with unsynchronized values. And to prove it, I will click on the button now. If you looked closely, you've seen a movement on the red bar, but nothing happened with the current with text. And if I checked rendered HTML, we can see that the div was actually resized and it has 110 pixels width. I click again, now current width is 110, but HTML element is already 120 pixels in width. So our value in ref is always lagging by one render cycle from what is in state. Usually we get into this mistake if we overcomplicate our code, and we use ref while we don't have to. So simplest solution is to just use state instead of ref for rendered values. And here in this example, we can use the initial width, which will be 100 pixels, and change our ref usage to initial width plus extra width, which is the state. 
Now we save it, refresh the page, and we check if it works. And voila, our values are now synchronized. But if we for some reason have to read directly from the DOM node, for example, we don't know what is the initial width of a div, because it may depend on external content, like dynamically loaded images from some other server, we should move the reading phase of the ref to the effect. So here we are reading the offset width from the ref, so from the actual DOM node, and then we need to trigger re-render somehow. So we are introducing new state, the current width. We set the current width with the value of the offset width. Then the component is re-rendered and in JSX we return the state. So now if I change the rendered output and refresh the page, I can see that in this new component, the state, meaning the style of the box, is still synchronized with the current width displayed here but it's a bit more convoluted solution. And for 90% of cases, I would bet that you just simply need to use state. And the general rule from both second mistake about mounting component and this one is to never use ref for rendering code. And if we really need to read values from the DOM nodes, we should do it in effects or event handlers because they are called after the commit phase. So we can be sure that the DOM nodes were already created and updated. But can we? Can we be sure that in the use effect the DOM node was already created? Well, not exactly. Let's say we have a button that shows and hides a form that will internally have an input element that we want to automatically focus. So in button handler, we set is visible state that is initially false, and we are conditionally rendering form based on the state. So on the first render of the component, the JSX will be rendered, the form will not be present, and the use effect will be called. So input was not rendered, the input ref current will be undefined, and we will call focus on the undefined value that will trigger an error. We can check it in practice here. You may think this is an easy fix. We just need to add optional chaining here, and if the current value will be undefined, our focus method will not be called. Okay, we hit save, refresh, and yeah, there is no error here. We see our button, we can click on it, we see our form, and again, there is no error here. But there is one thing missing, the focus on the input element. So what happened here? On the first render, the use effect was called, but the input ref.current was undefined, because our input element was not rendered yet. And after we hit the show height form button, the second render was triggered, but the use effect has empty dependency array, so it will run only once on the initial mount. One thing that we shouldn't do is to remove the empty dependency array, because now our effect will be run on every change in the component, so we will be focusing the input element on every re-render. Another idea that you might have is to put the input ref.current as a dependency here. So when the input is rendered, our ref will be updated. But you have to remember that changing ref value doesn't trigger new render. So use effect will not run in the first place, and it will not have a chance to check if any value in the dependencies list has changed. We have three choices here. We can change the dependency to is visible state, because this state will trigger re-render and it's also directly responsible for showing and hiding the input element. So we can save, refresh, and we can see that the input element was focused automatically. Or we can extract the entire form to a separate component like here. So when we render conditionally this form, the use effect will run after the input element was rendered. So this method will also run. And we can also check it here. Hit refresh, click, and yeah, this is the same output. The last solution is to use callback ref, which is a pattern that can actually tell us that the DOM node was mounted. Callback refs probably deserve a separate video, but just to give you a glimpse, we can pass a function instead of a ref to the ref property, and it will be called with the DOM node when ref is mounted. So we can be sure that our function inside the callback will be called after the rendering of the input element. One thing to remember here is that we should be always aware of conditional rendering, 
and the fact it could impact our DOM refs. And last problem that we'll cover is probably the trickiest, because it can be easily made and then hard to debug. That's because the boundaries between when to use refs and when not to use them are a bit blurry, but we'll try to define those boundaries now. Getting back to our example with a form, I've added a second button that hides the form, but contrary to the first button, it doesn't use state. It operates directly on a DOM node using the DOM API. So let's say our form is visible, and now we'll try to remove it with the DOM API. Removal was successful, but if we now try to show it again with React state, it will blow up in our face. The entire app failed, and our screen is now blank. The reason is that React was not aware of the change in the DOM, because we made it outside of it. And that's why refs are called an escape hatch, because they operate outside of normal React render flow. And we definitely shouldn't allow our code to use both React and DOM API to control the same thing, because it will lead to conflicts like this. I would suggest to only use refs and by extension DOM API to the things that you can't do in React itself. Here is a little cheat sheet. In white circle we have the list of most commonly used parts of DOM. Theoretically we can directly control everything here using refs and DOM API. But there is this inner green circle with parts already controlled by React. And those things should be controlled using JSX and state to synchronize correctly with React render flow. This kind of control could be named declarative programming because we describe the UI declaratively and all imperative DOM operations are then performed by React, not us. On the other hand, every time React doesn't expose some method that we can find in DOM API, like measurements of rendered HTML elements, focus management methods, text selection, scroll management, etc. In this case, we can safely use an escape hatch, which is ref, because it will not get into conflict with React operations. So we are using refs to access DOM nodes directly and call DOM API methods, which can be also described as imperative programming. Because we are doing imperative operations, we have to call methods ourselves. So this is how switching between using state and refs is also switching between declarative and imperative paradigm. And programming in React is in its nature declarative, but by the escape hatch we can switch to the imperative style. One more thing. Mistakes discussed here are related to persisting DOM nodes in refs, but I have a similar video on persisting values in refs down here. Also, you can let me know that I should make more videos like this by hitting subscribe button. Thanks for watching.